Eating large, infrequent meals is a common practice, especially among people trying to lose weight. This method is known as intermittent fasting. The idea is to eat once or twice a day, but to have larger meals during those times. It's a popular approach because it is psychologically satisfying and effective for weight loss. However, we need to discuss how safe this practice is for the body and what the best approach is if we choose to eat fewer but larger meals. The concept of eating large but infrequent meals is based on the idea that our ancestors followed this eating pattern. Hunter-gatherers often faced periods of feast and famine, so they ate large, infrequent meals. While this logic is sound, the context of modern life is vastly different. Our ancestors consumed natural foods intermittently while being physically very active. In contrast, today's diet is often full of excess calories, and our lifestyle is much more sedentary compared to our ancestors. So, let's first explore what happens when you eat large meals. Your stomach begins to stretch chronically, which can lead to bloating, gastroesophageal reflux diseases and slow gastric emptying, gastroparesis, and an increase in stomach size. While a larger stomach can handle large meals, it also produces more of the hunger hormone ghrelin, leading to a cycle of eating larger meals. Large meals require more enzymes, hormones, and stomach acid for digestion, which increases the risk of damaging the gastric mucosa and can lead to serious issues like gastric ulcers and stomach cancers. Additionally, consuming large meals causes higher spikes in blood glucose and fat levels in the blood. High glucose can eventually lead to diabetes, and elevated fat levels can damage blood vessels, causing cardiovascular diseases such as heart attacks and strokes. Most meta-analyses highlight that while prolonged fasting and a restricted eating window are effective for weight loss, they also cause higher and more prolonged peaks in blood glucose and lipid levels compared to eating smaller, more frequent meals. Therefore, from a metabolic health perspective, large meals are less beneficial than small, frequent meals. A large meal is typically defined as consuming more than 700 calories in one sitting, with some people eating up to 2,000 calories or more. If you still prefer eating large meals, here's what you should know. Prioritize whole, minimally processed foods. This is crucial because the calorie and nutritional differences between whole and processed foods are significant. For example, 100 grams of boiled potatoes have about 87 calories, whereas 100 grams of potato chips have about 547 calories. Timing matters. If you eat one large meal, it's better to do so in the early evening within a 1-2 to two hour window. If you eat two meals per day, it's advisable to spread them over a 6-8 to eight hour window, such as having one meal in the morning and the second in the early evening. It is recommended that roughly 50% of your diet consist of fruits and vegetables, such as apples, carrots, and tomatoes. The goal is to obtain dietary fiber, vitamins, and minerals from these foods. Another 25% of your diet should be proteins like meat, chicken, and salmon, especially lean meat. Proteins are crucial for muscle growth, repair, and maintenance. The remaining 25% should be carbohydrates, like whole wheat bread, oats, and whole wheat pasta. These foods provide complex carbohydrates and dietary fibers, offering long-lasting energy and promoting healthy digestion. Avoid simple sugars and processed foods because they are absorbed quickly, causing rapid increases in blood glucose and insulin levels, as well as spikes in triglycerides, which can damage blood vessels. Common examples of simple sugars include almost any desserts, candies, chocolates, cakes, white bread, and many fast foods. Organizing a large meal. If you prefer eating large meals, here's how to organize them. Start with a glass of water, this helps with hydration and provides a sense of fullness. Begin with fiber-rich foods, start with a light, fiber-based dish like a salad or vegetable soup. This helps to fill you up with fewer calories. Follow with protein-based foods, opt for items like chicken breast or salmon. Proteins give a sense of satiety and help maintain steady blood sugar levels. And with healthy fats and complex carbohydrates, foods like whole wheat pasta, avocados, or nuts are best eaten towards the end of the meal. They contain dietary fiber and promote long-term fullness and stable blood sugar levels. Desserts. If you choose to have dessert, 
eat it at the end of the meal. This reduces the rate of calorie and sugar absorption and helps you eat smaller portions naturally. However, it is generally recommended to avoid sugary products if possible and replace them with fruits. Eat slowly, slow eating allows time for the release of cholecystokinin, the main satiety hormone. The presence of proteins and fats in the intestine triggers this hormone, which takes time to transition from the stomach. Eating slowly gives your body time to register fullness and helps avoid overeating. Regular physical activity is crucial. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise daily, with one hour being optimal. Cancer risk and large meals. Studies have shown that eating large meals at night can increase the risk of colorectal cancer. Conversely, overnight fasting can improve the prognosis in women diagnosed with breast cancer. While there is no direct correlation between meal size and gastric cancer, there may be an indirect association. Salty and smoked food significantly increase the risk of gastric cancer. High total calorie intake and obesity are also important risk factors for pancreatic cancer, which is often aggressive and insidious. This is because high levels of insulin and insulin-like growth factor promote the growth of cancerous cells and inhibit apoptosis, the process of programmed cell death.